my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and this is part three um, of The Plot Thickens. <laughs> so if you watch part one, you may remember this, which is the Omega One, and to search for it, you have to put Omega, the number one, um, not the word one. Um, and we've been, I went and did two videos, one was just running through this video, and looking at all the parts and the assembly and it teaching us basically how this thing works. Uh, from that original video, or the second video, the second video was an interview on Autoline. Um, and some people were saying, this is just a few quick comments about the video itself, were saying, you don't trust anybody who has to look stuff up on Google. <laughs> the whole point was, is if you actually listen to the video, as I say... Oh, you know, this guy instantly says, oh, it's a, a passive linear engine. And I was like, I have never heard of one of those before. If you haven't, you know, no one's heard of absolutely bloody everything. If you haven't heard of things before, look them up. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. But um, I was saying, oh, it's an axial flow engine. So I've said the word already. And then to demonstrate what one of those is is I just type in axial flow engine. That does two things. Number one, that shows that, you know, you can look this stuff up. I'm demonstrating that if you are watching one of these, you know, engine video things and someone starts mouthing off something, right, you can... Uh, that's a better picture, right? That's a better way to do it. Um, if someone starts mouthing off, you can check this stuff up. You know, so if I say, oh, if I say, oh, an axial flow engine... And you're listening to me, you can just go axial flow engine. You know what I mean? You can check what I'm saying. Is it a real thing? You know what I mean? And what comes up when you put that in? So if I go a, a linear engine, right? A linear engine, free piston engine. I don't quite understand what these things are. Oh, look. And then if you look, you can see that these are the piston moves in a linear fashion. There is no rotational component to it, apart from that one. But you get what I mean. You can see that all what these all have in common is the piston. There is no crankshaft. There is no conrod, right? You can understand that. A linear engine, right? So if you go a passive linear engine, you can have a look at that and go, oh, uh, right, still looks a bit like a linear again. Looks more like magnets and stuff. You can't see anything that that bloke is describing because that's a rotational thing. I can't see anything here that looks like a rotational engine. Maybe this, but this is a valve system. And it says four-stroke internal combustion engine. So the whole point was to show in a video live, and that's the thing you see, I say live. When I was watching, obviously it's recorded, but when I was watching that, that's the first time I've, first time I've watched this video. And I'd got halfway through the interview. And what I mean by halfway through is that when they're talking about this engine i got about 40 50 percent through it and then basically went back and went through the whole thing um until they start talking about other shit um and when it went fucking absolutely bonkers so for the three or four people who said i don't trust anyone has to look stuff up on fucking google you know it's like um i'll tell you something right now right so um i might say a labyrinth seal just say for instance i was just thinking of something that people you generally don't um a lab, la oh, for God's sake, a lab, rinth. Oh, for fuck's sake, why is my, key my keyboard acting up like a fucking compete twat? Lab, lab, oh no, no, the keyboard's not fucking playing for some reason. It keeps on pairing and unpairing and any road. I'm not even going to do it, but if I said, oh, a labyrinth seal, right? You might be. What, with David Bowie in? You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You might not know what that is. So you look up Labyrinth Seal, and you can just look at the images and follow along. Um, that kind of thing. The other thing is, as well, is as you're waffling on, it's nice to not. To, it's nice to check. Because a passive, a, a, a linear passive engine might be a thing that I've just never fucking heard of. You know what I mean? Any road. Whoops, we kind of jumped a bit there. So I wanted to go through some of the fundamental properties of this engine um, because there's some mighty big claims 
So let's get to the end. I wanted to know a few things because this is missing a lot of things. Right. It says £35 for the engine, 160 horsepower, uh, £170, uh, pound, it's going to be fucking the other way around, of torque, idle 1,000 RPM. I don't know why that matters. The, the red line, 25,000 RPM. Again, this means, means nothing. Air cooled, that is important. Oil change intervals, you don't know that. And just going through all of these things, right? And it's these ones, right, that are interesting. Thermal efficiency, 60%. Parasitic losses reduced by 70% plus. Uh, mechanical efficiency, 90%. Bit of a weird... So these, when you start... These are numbers, right? I'm looking for numbers, right? When you want to compare anything to anything, I want to see numbers, right? And these are numbers we can... They're figures we can work with. So we're going to work with those figures. Um... So, everyone should know by now that horsepower... Oh, for fuck... Is this even going to work? Horse... Horsepower... No, it's not fucking working. Why are you not working? Come on, Jesus. The battery's died. No, it's flashing pairing. It's having a fucking heart attack. Come on. Oh, uh, no. It's fucking lost it. Um. Oh, we've got a HP. See, it will do it. Right, so HP equals... Oh, no, it's... For fuck's sake. What is... Why is my life like... No, it's had it. Right, forget that. Uh, good thing that I did all this on a scrap bit of paper. Um, I was going to do it on the whiteboard for reasons that I won't go into right now. We can't do that right now. Um, but if you, you've got torque, right? You've got torque... You've got app, you've got torque, you've got the horsepower output. You can actually work out by doing um, torque equals uh, RPM, uh, torque times RPM divided by 5252. You can rearrange the whole numbers and you can get uh, what RPM that is at. Now, with this amount of torque, uh, this horsepower, the RPM is 5,000. Oh, it's off the top of my head, I didn't actually write that one down. It's about 5,000 RPM. So at 5,000 RPM, it's making 160 horsepower of torque. Um, for an engine that's so light, that's amazing. Oh, that was it. There's other, pe other people who said uh, it's 2.205 pounds per kilo. I don't work in fucking Imperial because it's dog shit. And I know someone's going to say horsepower, but I only use that because no one knows what a kilowatt is and no one knows what a fucking horsepower is. So I use the one that everyone is, uh, you know akin to um so yeah that's why i use horsepower because it's everyone everyone thinks they know what that means uh, but people in this country specifically and in america they know even less what a kilowatt is it means fuck all to them uh, the general audience that's what i'm talking about uh so 5000 rpm so if an engine this light so it's basically half right it's 2.2 no one gives a shit it's, <laughs> it's basically half so 16, 17, 18, 16, 16 kilos, right? A 16 kilo engine, which is silly light, right? 16 kilos is silly light. Remember, there's no transmission or clutch or anything. This is just this setup. But 16 kilos, we are going to check that out at a later date because I can do that. Um, 16 kilos for an engine that can produce 160 horsepower is fucking mind-boggling. Um, and at 5,000 RPM, that's really quite slow. But regardless, this whole it can do twenty five thousand RPM, nice, <laughs> I think. Um, but it's weird; it doesn't tell us what RPM these two are at. But we kind of know. Or oh, you can work backwards. Let's put it that way. What I want to get through to you is oh, I really need this to work. Oh, it is working, right? You've all of a sudden decided to work, right? So, um, so I want to talk about something I haven't really touched yet. And that, oh, for fuck's sake. Come on. Right. Right, so there's a thing called the, the car. Oh, uh, it's it's called, so this is, um, oh, what was his face? I always forget his first name. I remember his middle name. Nicholas. 
Nicholas uh, Leonard Carno. That's how you spell Car. <laughs> That's how you spell Carno. Fucking French. Um, so that's how you spell Carno. There's a thing called the Carno cycle, which we're all familiar with, but I don't want to go into that until I go into the thermodynamics videos. Really, basically, this guy did a lot of work with thermodynamics. End of for this video because I'll be here forever otherwise. Because I, I actually like talking about the old school boys um, who did all this stuff. Um, but any road, so there's a thing called the Carnot efficiency, and in an ideal perfect world, what is the theoretical maximum that you can get out of an engine from a thermodynamics point of view, right? So really, what that is is that is an efficiency um, which is equal to one minus, and we'll get to the one minus bit in a minute. And it's basically the ambient temperature, so the outside temperature, right, over. So we'll just put up oh, fucking out. We'll just put a line. Are oh, you gonna? Oh, I thought it was gonna snap to grid then. Over. Um, I probably spell. Oh, the tab does work. Over the combustion temperature, right? So this is probably not the best program to do this in, but fuck it. We're here now. So it's the ambient temperature, and then you times by a thousand to get percentage. All right? What this will spit out is this will spit out a number. Um, well, we'll do it. This will spit out a number that is. Um, so it'll be one minus. Let's pick, and you've got to do it in Kelvin, right? So it's absolute temperatures. Let's just say three hundred. Um, which is around about 30 degrees, or let's do 290. About 20 degrees, approximately about there, C. And you divide that by combustion temperature. Now we're going to use around about 800 degrees, right? And what you get spat out there is this number here, right? And it is ignored the minus because it's a twat. If you minus one from that, oh, fucking no, you don't, you bell end, sorry. Fucking calculators. Uh, what was I doing? Let's just do 300, right? Because it's about 30 degrees. And we divide that by our combustion temperature, which is about that, equals that. And then you get that in your minus 1 there. So 72%. 72 right? So that equals 72%. Right? You times it by 100. So that's 72.2 uh, .2 reoccurring. Um, percent right so this is the theoretical maximum this is forget right just fucking forget friction forget pumping losses forget everything and the reason why the best way I can describe it is imagine you have a cylinder right in an end uh, in a hydraulic cylinder and in that hydraulic cylinder you have a piston right that sits on a rod you know what I mean? There's a rod this side, right? And if all being equal, let's just say the green zone... Oh, for f well, I would do that, one of you bastard. Let's just say the green zone there is uh, at one pressure. And I'll make this really, really obvious. Let me just put a dot in there. And a... No, fuck's sake. A, no, fuck's sake. A dot in there. Right, there we go. Even more obvious, let's go red so it's easy to see. Right, so let's just say that the pressure pushing against here like this is uh, a thousand. Right, it doesn't matter what the pressure units are. Is my fucking... Oh, no, she doesn't want to work, does it? Let's just say the pressure's a thousand. It does not matter, like I say, what the units are. Right, you could be in fucking caterpillars. Right, it doesn't matter. Right, the the force pressing against there is a thousand, and the force pressing against there is also a thousand. Right. Now, what happens to the piston in this cylinder? Nothing. Right. It, it's it opposite and equal forces. Right. It goes nowhere. Right. Well, in a sense, what we're talking about here is that your 
um, this is your combustion side of your piston, right? And this is your crankcase. And your crankcase is vented to atmosphere. Right? Your crankcase here is vented to atmosphere. So let's just say the atmosphere... Oh, fucking hellfire. It's not what I wanted. The atmosphere is here like this. And we're going to... To make everything all equal, we're going to delete that. And we're going to make everything in here blue, like this. All right? Lovely jubbly. We all understand that. That's good. All right? So that's the atmosphere. Like so. Just to be fucking equal. Like that. All right? So what we're doing is we're, uh, the temperature of an ideal gas is related to its pressure. So if we call this here, if we call that a 1,000... Like we did in our little sum there. Um, where's my... Uh, this here. Our ambient, right? We called that uh, 300. For oh, fuck's sake, it's numlock on. There we go. We called that 300 and we called that 1,800. Right? We don't give a fuck about the rest of it. There we go. Like so. This is what we've done. It should be in brackets. We'll actually even get rid of that notation. Fuck it. We just need this... Um, we don't even need that really because we can just you know, I've hopefully thoroughly explained what's going on so there, it's just basically that divided by that right? it's your ambient divided by your, real, your combustion temperature and we've said, oh this is 300, right? so we're going to delete that, we've got that colour and we're just going to go this is 300 right? fucking bingo right? so that's what is forcing against what right? and remember that for this scenario here, we've got that percentage. So let's just say we'll call it the we'll call it the Carnot E, right? Just like that. And then let's just say we lower our temperature to uh, really low, right? We call it I don't know, fucking. Let's just call it a hundred Kelvin, right? Really fucking low. And I really should put them there, really low like that, right? We've got 100 Kelvin here, and then let's just put our line in, like so, that's lovely. Right, and then we're going to say, oh, our combustion temperature is the same. Right, so if we do this, right, we lower our intake temperature, then what do we get? So we do exactly the same thing, we get 100, and we divide it by the 1080, right, and we get this number, and then we... Uh, we just minus one from that, right? And it's 90%, right? We've got a 90% efficiency now. And obviously, like I say, you times it by 100. Oh, let's put 0.74, let's be precise, right? Now, this is absolutely fucking freezing, right? This is 100 Kelvin. Everything has turned to, well, it's not a gas anymore, right? <laughs> Most of these things are liquids, right, at this temperature. Or... Let's skip around and do the whole thing again. Let's repeat the whole thing again. Right? So we've made it cold there. The ambient cold. Let's change it. Let's make this back to 30 degree day. Let's turn this to fucking 3,500 and whatever. Right? Stupid temperature. Our combustion temperature has gone through the fucking roof. We are burning fucking, I don't know, we're burning star juice. Right? That's what we're burning. So you've got your 300, and you divide it by 3520, because fucking why not, right? And then we minus a 1 from that, and then we get 91%, right? So you can see 0.47. Oh, for fuck's sake. 90.47. Fucking keyboard. Jesus Christ. Why is it shit the bed? I, I have no idea piece of shit, it's a Polaroid wireless keyboard, don't ever bother, that's my shitty endorsement not endorsement, that's my uh, review of that um, any road so, you can see, we've got almost the fucking same number, just randomly um, but you can see that this is you got to remember, this is the theoretical maximum right, this is, this is it, uh, and it's because we're forcing gases against the world now i know someone's going to say well why don't you seal the crankcase but the temperature in the crankcase of the air 
can only go up. Right? If you start, you know, if this imagine we seal this off. Right? So imagine we seal this off. Forget the pumping losses, right? Let's just ignore pumping losses. As this piston goes up and down, up and down, up and down in a normal engine, right? It's going to compress this and just heat this up. So your efficiency is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And this heat is going to leach out. And over time, you're going to get an equilibrium while you're pumping it. So it's only going to get higher. So that's that's a bad thing, right? Having a higher uh, ambient temperature, right? So you can see what's going on here. We really want the coldest possible charge. We want the coldest possible temper intake temperature and the highest combustion temperature. Right, this is what Carnot did. It's using basically thermodynamic laws. So that's the theoretical maximum. Right? And this is not including any kind of losses. Pumping losses, frictional losses, waste heat, blah 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 blah. It is just the thermal gradient. I did a video about this fucking years ago, probably six, seven years ago now, just saying it's the thermal gradient that matters. Right? Any road so, let's get back to this engine, right? Um, we're going to have a quick look at this engine, and you can see, I want to just talk about a few things. So, you'll see at the beginning of this video, I skipped through how I did this with SolidWorks, and it was using cross-sections, two cross-sections of the actual drawings, and the fact that the guy said that, um, so, you know, these pictures here, Oh, actually, we can even... No, I don't want to do that. We can actually even open this SolidWorks file there. So you use the... Oh, for God's sake. Um, so what I did was, is I actually fucked up. And I used the wrong scale. I thought he said four and a half inches rotor diameter. is actually a radius of four and a half inches. So these things are quite big. Um, but any road, so, you know, using that, it's the same model because in the video, it literally rotates the same model. You can see it here just wh whizzing around. So I took that picture and the other picture. So I'm using their, you know, basically their scale. He's told me that these rotors are four and a half. Now, either it's four and a half from the inner edge there to there, or it's from the tip to a theoretical other tip. I've gone for the base circle four and a half inches so my numbers can be off but the ratios won't be off they could be slightly off right but the ratios aren't slightly off so this engine that they're demoing in here and generally companies and places don't make cad that isn't true to an actual engine you know usually they don't make fake cad especially when you're trying to sell something like this um so i'm pretty confident that at least my relationships will be right so, we don't need to save that. What is the displacement of this engine? This engine as a whole is... Uh, how tall is it? Can we just do a... I want to do a point. Yeah, just do a point to point. So this whole engine is half a metre. Uh, 60, basically 60 centimetres, 600 millimetres wide. Just almost. And it's about as wide as an A4 paper piece of paper is long so 30 centimeters or 325 millimeters right but you've got to remember this it, it's not a real engine right you're missing everything from this there's really loads and bits and pieces you know there is no manifold there is no exhaust and i changed their intake because that really did fucking annoy me to that just a straight off angle intake the exhaust is here for demonstration purposes i'm going to actually change that because I, I don't like it it's really annoyed me to that but um yeah, so what I've got here, what I can show you is we've got the whole thing of, you know, how it draws in. Um, so fuel and air goes in there and it fills it up until a certain transfer point. Um, so you can measure all of these. right? And I've got them. So the intake volume is this one here in green. So when I put the rotor there, uh, this is the intake volume of when it closes off after there. And what the whole thing is um, as an intake volume. Like I said, forget this exhaust port there. That exhaust port shouldn't be there. That's for later on. So I should be able to just hide 
hide that. Let's hide that. I like it says cold housing. I'm kind of using it at the moment as both. So we'll do that. There we go. Yeah, save it. Oh, why, where have you gone now? What have I done? Oh, for fuck's sake. I know what I've done. Sorry, I'm just a spastic. Uh, I've done that and I've told it to hide like an idiot. And I should have just rolled it back. I was not thinking. I'm thinking about parts instead of assemblies. There we go. Right, so yes, save that. So, like this, and you can work out, because I've said, right, it's closed off, because it's still leaking through, and I've just gone for the middle of the rotor of when it's closed that off, even though there's blow-by and all that shite. Soon I'm going to do some videos on, because it might as well use this as, as, as a good example about thermal expansion and houses and holes and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, this is your sweat volume. So all of this, as this rotor goes round, is going to compress all of this until it reaches there, and that's when it can short circuit into this cavity. Um, but all of that gets squashed into that. All right, so that's the volume. The reason why I do it like this and make an actual solid part, which is the entire volume, is this SolidWorks is a twat for volumes, but if you make a empty space into a part like this, and go to mass properties, it will tell you that this is 700.81 cubic centimetres exactly. How fucking amazing is that? So 700cc, right? So remember that. They reckon this thing makes 160 horsepower out of 700cc. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> and if we get rid of that, if we get rid of our clearance volume just for a second. Oh, no, actually, we'll leave that up for a second because you can see the comparison. If it shows us nothing, it's behind it, isn't it? Um, so this red section is where it comes round to here and there. You see, that's that's when it's about to short circuit into there. So I picked when it's basically short circuiting. The same that that gap is. So, you know, we'll just say that that's the volume. So I've taken this volume here and looked at the sweat volume and the compression ratio is around about 15.8 15, 15 to 1 to 14.5 to 1. The reason why there's a slight variant there is I'm just giving it a bit of leeway on the minimum and maximum of how I record this and how you can change the timing ever so slightly based on the interaction between these rotors. Um, because I'm not bloody designing things, I'm just looking at their model um, but regardless, uh, that's high, 14 to 1. But it's it, it's realistic, right? It's realistic. Um, some people might say, right, well, you copied it this way, but how do you know the depth? Because I've got that cross-section. That cross-section also gives us depth. And it's a spinning model, so it shows us the whole thing. Um, and I've basically just copied what they've got. right? Copied all the angles, copied all the port sizes, copied everything, basically. And... Yeah, so this all checks out. 700cc um, is quite big for a 700cc, being, you know, 0.6 of a metre tall and, you know, 0.3 of a metre long. And how uh, wide, how long is this thing? You remember, there's nothing attached to this. I haven't put the gears in because there's no fucking point. And, you know, it's f 0.4 of a metre wide. That's quite big. And we haven't finished... We don't know how big the whole thing would actually be um, because you've got a gear housing that comes up to here and basically these collars are the end stops. So that's where it all ends. So it's quite a big thing. Um, but who would care if it can push out 160 horsepower? We'll get to that in a minute. Um, I haven't finished doing all these other bits yet. And then the other thing I want to know is the expansion ratio, which is quite... Um, we'll just go to expansion volume. So the expansion volume is how much of this... I've actually done it the wrong way. It should be going that way. Um, I didn't realise that until just now. But it's because I've been working from this side. It's almost like backwards. I was using the exhaust port. Um, but the expansion ratio, which would change... Where would it launch from? 
It's probably the same, about the same place if you put that in there. Yeah, it's about the same place to there. Yeah, so the difference won't be that much. It'd be like 2% different. But if you open this part, this rotor isn't as wide. Um, this is 631. And he says in the video that it has you can control... Uh, that this rotor is skinnier than this bigger rotor. That will give you more power, but it won't give you an efficiency because your pumping losses are greater um, than your expansion rate because your expansion and compression ratios. I'll get into that into a different video. One, because I've done this wrong, so I want this to be right. Um, but as it sits, it has a greater compression than it does as a volume, as it does an expansion, which is good for power because it maintains higher pressures to a degree. That's all complicated. Um, it's not as simple as that. You have to actually look at the numbers. But um, the compression, the expansion volume is smaller, which generally isn't good for um, efficiency. And again, that's a totally different thing. That's like Atkinson cycles and stuff like that. We'll get into that later. I'm just showing you some of the things that I have been working on to try and quickly get some numbers out of this thing. But that isn't actually the original um, topic of this video, there's a bit more to this than meets the eye. <coughs> right then, so what I actually wanted to um, show you, which is something that was sent to me by Kai, thank you very much Kai, you are greatly appreciated, is this. So this is uh, from the Way Way Back Machine. This is a... Um, it says Ein Tact Motor, DE, dot DE. So uh, Tact being the French for stroke. So Ein, Ein zwei drei, is the, and I've probably fucked everyone off who's German. Um, that's one, one, so basically the one stroke motor. That's what this is. And there's some pattern application stuff here and dresses and this and the other. So I did look up at the patent and the patent uh, was uh, submitted in 1994. Uh, or it was, sorry, it was, um, I think it was uh, issued in 1994, and it has now lapsed. But this is uh, a thing talking about the engine, and it says stuff like uh, efficiencies, and it says efficiency up to 63%, um, but can be, if you make it out ceramics and stuff, up to 75%, up to 80%. With a 500 degree C operating temperature on surface of cylinder and rotor made of ceramics. Fucking nonsense. Now remember, this is the patent. This was um, oh, this was issued by a guy called, or the inventor was Walter Muller. I think it's Muller because there's uh, an umlaut of the U. And, um, or Muller, 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 one of the two. It says the compression chamber operates cold, whereas the working chamber is operated hot. Therefore, the working chamber should be made of technically high-performance ceramics that are made to operate above 500 degrees C, surface red hot, or even higher. Conventional engines are still literally dirty catapults, which I thought are a dirty catapult. I think that's a fucking awesome way of fucking talking about it. They have only negligible, negligibly being improved. This is a translation from the German, so there'll be some words or whatever. The new single stroke, this is not a single stroke engine, so this thing is not a single stroke engine. Um, I'll explain why in a future video. Um, uh, claims to cut the fuel combustion by half with the performance remaining unchanged. This inevitably will call skeptics onto the scene. Well, anything that's any kind, any kind of scientific or engineering endeavor should any road, why is the performance acceptably unacceptably low? Well, if you know anything about Carnot's work, it's pretty obvious why. He wrote a couple of books on it. And this was back in fucking 18 whenever. All, all attempts made so far to change this have only ended in justifying the poor combustion of the four-stroke engine. Well, like I say, there's a lot of thermodynamic and physical and chemical reasons why. It's not just that people are just fucking dumb. 
which everyone who tries to sell you a new engine design will tell you that. Until today, the poor efficiency seems to have been inevitable. Well, it is, yeah. This fact can be hushed up or even excused. For example, the efficiency of a Formula 1 race car having an engine output of 200 kilowatts and a correspondingly high speed of rotation is just 5%. The efficiency is 5%. I hope that's missing a zero. To put it more clearly, 5 litres out of every 100 are used for driving. The 95 years are exhausted and wasted. Well, that's completely wrong. So this is quite telling. The weirdest thing is a lot of these numbers that are quoted in here are quoted by that um, auto line. But whatever. Um, so it says stuff about uh, normal outputs, uh, efficiencies, um, Formula 1, it says 25, usable efficiency at 10% load, I don't know where you got these from, resulting from RPM and torque in proportion to normal power out, nominal power output. Uh, Alright, RPM and torque reduced by load. So this is... Oh, I don't understand. It, it, the five, I think someone, it says maximum efficiencies... Someone's got this horribly wrong. Um, weirdly enough, it shows you the pattern here. And it says, working chamber compressor rolling seals. Number three. All right, so I think they're seals for the bearings. Um, please wait for some reason. Um, there's a better picture in a minute. But I do want to read some of these. Uh, again, we're talking about... So we're talking about gas pressures and temperatures. This is very interesting because we can use these temperatures with what I just went through originally, hence why I went through all this trouble to show you this. You can look at these and work out what's what. You know what I mean? You can work out these crazy efficiencies, but you can work out um, from this because we have uh, maximum pressures and temperatures, four-stroke engine, two, sh two shaft rotations, one stroke, uh, Two-stroke engine, you can look at, um, oh, what is it? And then this thing, the single stroke. And if you look at these numbers, we've got 90 to 150. And then we've got um, the actual, it says explosion, but obviously that's a translation. And then we've got the exhaust gas. So they're claiming that the two-stroke has higher temperatures. Um, for some reason, and that the combustion here has different temperatures. We can look at these efficiencies using this and basically just see what works and what doesn't. Um, these are wrong. I'll tell you right now, these are all wrong. I'm not. You can do it yourself. Go through it, do it yourself. Um, but these are wrong. And it says stuff like up to 75 to 80% with steel ceramics. The skeptics about the single stroke engine result from the fact that the gas exchange is still unknown. Well, you can't start making claims if you don't know your pressures and temperatures. There is no gas exchange in the usual sense, therefore the engine is neither a four stroke nor a two stroke, which is wrong. Uh, thus it becomes obvious that it is difficult to explain such a future oriented idea. So whoever wrote all this, I don't know who wrote this, um, it just says yours faithfully, but doesn't actually have seems seem to have anyone's name. It says Walter Muller there, but that could be just this. I don't know if all of this has been written by Walter. If it has, Walter's a crackhead. Um, but this looks very similar. This looks very similar. And all of a sudden we get to the crux, which is this versus this. Now this is basically... One of these with this this system, it's one of these, but it has two. Walter's idea has two, which actually means that you can fire both chambers. It's exactly the same idea, right? It goes through the whole thing of compressing this. Then it goes through these transfer ports to here, where the fuel is injected and burned, and then you have your exhaust. A very simplistic idea, same kind of thing. But this has two, which is actually making the most of what you have. Because instead of having 
one row to do it, you can have, you know, basically have one of these down here and just have a, a double action going. Now, <coughs> you might say, with this we have a bigger sweat volume. You can get around that by, as it has done here, by how many of these you actually have. Have a big pumping one in the, mo in the middle and separate the two ones uh, the the hot sides if you want to put it that way it's not a bad idea it means that you've got a hot and a hot and a colder in the middle it's not a bad idea you can do this any which way you want the fact of the matter is is that the omega one so you know this this design is basically this pattern has run out and it looks to me like they've just taken this idea and just chopped one side off that's what it is but kept all of the and this actually has this has a lot more detail because it tells you exactly uh, working pressures and uh, timing which is all nice there's also a thing talking about bypass here for fresh fuel and air there are some bits missing and the bits missing because uh, this is the way way back this site no longer exists apart from you know this data that's been kept uh, speed of the uh, what is it the rotary pistons is approximately six to eight meters per second uh, optimal speed, maximum three thousand, they say. Um, so it goes, it goes through an awful lot of stuff. I've read through this. There are some gems in here. It doesn't really require me to go through it properly just for this video, um, but there are some bits I do want to pick up later. We have got what amounts to it's. This is pressure versus crank angle, so it's not a PV diagram. We do need to go through that later on in the future when he starts talking about this is a single stroke engine. Uh, it's not. I'll, a PV diagram will show it better, but I'll just quickly go through it. Is that the whole point of this engine? Um, it'll actually show you here. Is that you have an intake? So air has been is going in, right, and. That's one full rotation, right? So on a PV diagram, the pressure will now go up as it now... So let me put, put a PV diagram up. Come on. Why are you trying to fuck me over? PV diagram. So this is very much like a wankle in a sense. Um, so yeah, what we'll do is we'll have this. So you have your intake, so we're going intake um, across the bottom, so the, just a line across the bottom basically. So your volume is getting bigger and the pressure is basically flat. All right, that's what's going on here. We've just taken all this in. Now we've closed it, so now all of this volume in here is going to get compressed. So we're going to start going from down here up here. We're going to start making this climb. Right up here, as our, as the pressure will start to go up as our volume down here re reduces, so you'd have it like that. You got to remember this is our second rotation, but we are doing an intake as well. So you could call your intake and your compression one rotation, right? And you would call this this rotation a complete cycle one rotation. You could call that a stroke. Right, if you wanted to, you don't have to. I know a lot of people are not going to like that, but the thing is, we've got um, four separate cycles here. Then what we're doing is we're just squirting it through and transferring it to the other side, uh, like that, which does all this stupid swirling for some time for some reason. Uh, so there's a, a a lull. There's literally a lull in this system. Now with all these not having seals, this is just going to piss out. Right, it's it, it's the highest pressure in the engine at the moment. It's just going to piss out. They reckon it's just going to transfer straight over. Um, so then you go to the... Uh, has it got a better one? Yeah, so this side. So you get combustion. So you get the boom, right? Which is going to be boom and ignition there, boom. And then it just comes back down again. right? And then you have your exhaust. So basically, it's an auto cycle, right? You just have your boom and that boom. And then this is going to now shout your exhaust. Now it's going to push out your exhaust. There's a boom behind it. So it's a, it's an auto cycle, right? So you might call it a single stroke. It's not a single stroke because it goes in one rotor, goes all the way around, goes into the other rotor, goes all the way around. 
Right, it does do multiple functions with each rotor, but it's not a single stroke engine. It's it well, it doesn't have strokes. The whole thing runs off the auto cycle, right? So it has no strokes, so calling it a single stroke engine is just daft. Right? Um so like I say, when you run through this there's quite a few things uh things that don't make th thermodynamic sense. This is completely fucking rubbish. Um because the maximum you can usually get out of an engine is about seventy five. That's the possible maximum with no friction losses, no pumping losses, just nigh on like it's perfect, basically. It's a perfect engine. You're not getting eighty, fucking dream on. It's just not gonna happen. Um and people might set into coolers and stuff. That's all requires work. It's just not going to happen. Um, but it seems like someone has taken an idea that didn't. You know, this thing didn't. I, I can't find any running articles of it. I can't find anything. I think this is an oil feed between it, which they don't have. Um, but yeah. This is something that uh, Walter here had an idea for. Uh, I haven't found any working prototypes. I don't know what these pictures are here that are missing. Uh, prototype works view. This could be. Um, why? Why can't we? Can't we reload this image? No, it's broken. What a shame. Only a new tab. Will that work? Oh. It's just not there. That's such a shame. I'd love to see. If we copy that, I wonder if there's any way to get it in any way. No, it's such a shame. I'd anyone who knows where the original, if there is any original of this left or whatever, or anyone knows how to use this better than me. Um, but yeah, there's massive problems with the engine, full stop. Just with, My main concern with this thing is ceiling concerns and thermal concerns. Um, one of the other things as well is, it's something I've done videos on, but I want to do videos on pretty soon, which is the surface area uh, and heat, heat flux, heat transfer um, in a combustion cycle. So we're going to compare this, because this volume here is about 630 cc, we can compare this to a XT660 because it's a single cylinder and we're going to basically com directly compare the thermodynamic properties of that engine to this one because they're so close in CC and um, like I said just directly compare them thermodynamically um, so you can see the difference because that's something that people very rarely touch on they just say stuff like, oh, it's, you know, at the end of a, a slideshow, it's thermodynamic fi efficiency is this, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, well, it's too complicated for most people to go through, so no one, oh, people just take it at face value, that's what it is. Any road, uh, that's it just for now. I've got a lot, bit more work to do on this, um, but it, we're after the numbers, so I can show you and once I get things sort, uh, something else sorted out, then I'll be able to get back at the whiteboard and uh, we'll go through um, the thermodynamic properties, surface areas, um, expansion ratios, all that kind of goodies, goody, goody, goody kind of stuff. And um, then we'll, look at, we'll also look like, say, one of the main reasons I want to do this is to show thermal expansion, so I can physically show the thermal expansion of this be it titanium or aluminium um, and also so we can see the heat flux and the heat transfer from one thing to another and then look at the thermodynamic properties of them any road because uh, on face value people think this is fucking fantastic and it's not as rosy as it looks but uh, yes the plot thickens I think the fact that the guy uh, right at the beginning of the whole presentation on auto line said I would just about retired, and then I thought I'd just give this engine a stab. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> that smells fishy. Any road, hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.